Hi, I'm Cherry Damaris, and welcome to Macro Magic. And today I have with me a very good friend, Lorraine McCamley from uh, Boldly Quiet Counseling. And I'm so excited to have Lorraine on the show because she's done amazing work with coaching and consulting in the business world. Uh, she's written a book called Boldly Quiet. And um, she's here today to talk to us about um, ways that when you're starting a business or starting um, any sort of project, how to really know yourself and then know what your goals are and what your va values are. Did I get that right? Close enough. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome to the show. Thank you. So excited to have you. Um, tell me a little bit about how you got started with Boldly Quiet. So I, you know, I spent close to 30 years in the corporate world, and part of that as a team leader was, um, you know, informal coaching and, and mentoring and, and all of that. And I really enjoyed that aha moment when mm. I really broke through to somebody or helped somebody break through themselves. And so I decided to go back to school and I uh, went to Penn for organizational dynamics and, and really focused on coaching and organizational coaching there. And thinking it was sort of my, my uh, retirement you know, project. And that happened a little bit earlier than anticipated um, due to some corporate changes. But, um, but it, was, it was really that, that seed of watching people's eyes light up when when they a new thought came through or a new idea or their mindset opened up I, I love that well I have to say because I've experienced some of your coaching that um, and I've worked in the counseling years the uh, counseling field for years and I was really impressed by how grounded you are and then how um, you make things very conceptual so People oftentimes when they start companies, I don't know if this is correct, but they get these big, huge, outlandish ideas, and then they sort of feel like they're on a treadmill or a rabbit wheel, um, going around and around and around hamster wheel, and trying to figure out day to day mm -hmm. if they're matching up with their big dream mm -hmm. and big goals. And oftentimes in the healthcare, in the health industry, such as macrobiotics, we have a lot of teachers out there, a lot of students that study to be macrobiotic counselors or cooks or uh, leaders, mm -hmm. and they sort of spin their wheels, mm -hmm. not understanding all that work, yeah. and may not be going in the right direction of their dream. So that was my first year in business. I made a lot of mistakes that year because I, I hadn't really taken the time to understand myself. Mm -hmm. And that's when I, I hired a coach to help me really work through, okay, well, what's important to me? How do I want to be perceived in an authentic way? I don't want to pretend to be somebody else. Um, you know, how, how can I be courageous? And how can I, you know, who, who do I, you know, at the end of the day, who am I inside? Mm. And that's the journey that I, um, that I started that ended up with my, with my book, um, Boldly Quiet, because I felt like it was a journey that others needed to go on as well, where you take the time and, um, and do the work to really understand mm. all of that about yourself and your values. And, you know, when you retire or, you know, at your funeral, what do you want people to say? And then how do you pursue that today to make it happen tomorrow? Wow. I love the fact that you said you have to do the work before. And mm -hmm. oftentimes people don't. Yeah. Um, so they sort of just go out there and start spinning their wheels. And then they don't really focus on how they want to perceive and who mm -hmm. they are. Mm -hmm. um, I like particularly our mugs, mm -hmm. um, which <laughs> mention some of your goals. I will embrace who I am. I'll mm. embrace others. I'll be heard. I'll be visible. I will breathe. I will surprise and I will grow. I think we have a graphic photo of that mm -hmm. uh, as well. Um, but I love those reminders to, you know, pay attention. It's almost like when you buy a car, you've got to study all the facets of the car and then look at consumer mm -hmm. reports and, and look at prices and think what's, 
what really applies to you and oftentimes we just jump in there right right and right and and for me this was about um, it so I'm I'm an introvert and boldly quiet so um, so part of that was okay I'm an introvert but that's not an excuse to not be out there and not to be seen as um, contributing and not to be a leader you know a lot of people hide behind that and uh, Susan Cain wrote a great book called Quiet but she I didn't agree with a lot of the stuff in the book because it felt I don't, I don't like pastel colors I don't you know I like Monet but you know just the I, I'm loud inside Oh, interesting. and I, I wanted to give in, through the book I wanted to give people the opportunity to explore that loudness inside because a lot of the, the to give them a voice to, yes and then my book is about how do you express that voice wow. in a way that's authentic mm-hmm mm-hmm so this is really the work we would recommend for anyone even mm -hmm. like a student graduating from school or you know just somebody who wants to go into a field and is not sure it's the right career mm -hmm. um, so it's not just for you know entrepreneurs and, mm -hmm. and big company owners it's for anyone at every, any level right I, I really felt like a lot of my career was um, lived by default mm -hmm. so I just followed whatever path unfolded and um, and I think it's a lot better to live with intention, to wake up every morning and say, okay, what do I need to do today? What relationships do I need to build? Uh, what work needs to get done, again, to reach that end goal? Mm -hmm. And what I was excited about having you on the show was, like I said, in the health field, mm -hmm. um, specifically with macrobiotic teachers, many of the teachers we have on the show, um, it's a long struggle. It's a hard struggle. I know because mm -hmm. I've been there. So you graduate and you know when I first graduated I thought well maybe I want to be a feng shui practitioner. Maybe I want to be a shiatsu teacher. Maybe, you know there were so many different facets of macrobiotics where I could explore and, mm -hmm. and test and put out there. And it was almost like I turned schizophrenic. <laughs> <laughs> because it was like, okay, we're going to open this feng shui business. And then, well, I sort of liked some aspects of it. Don't understand other ones. And then I'll try shiatsu. And then I'll try cooking. And then, you know, and I see this with my students, mm -hmm. too. They're, they're exposed to so many different facets mm -hmm. of macrobiotics. And then when they graduate as a level student, they're like, well, what do I want to put out in the world? Mm -hmm. And who am I really? And mm -hmm. what do I love to do? Mm -hmm. So that really, you know, just sitting down, it doesn't, we talked about this before. It doesn't have to be a whole full year of coaching. Mm -hmm. It can be, you know, a couple sessions to get you grounded mm -hmm. and focused and in the right direction that's best for you. And, and sometimes you don't, um, necessarily recognize the barriers that you put up internally yourself mm -hmm. um, so, and it, I mean some of them are external but for example limiting beliefs um, you know like that the girls aren't good at math you know the society sort of says that and everybody buys into it so we probably lost out on a lot of of good um, you know mathematicians who are w women um, but we also interpret um, I, and I actually have a funny story about this. We, we place our own interpretation on events. Mm -hmm. And so it's basically the, your experiences and your personality and, and everything form a um, really a lens through which you look at the world. So I, I, uh, when I got out of college, I went to a friend's house for dinner with his family. And they yelled at each other the whole time. And I was devastated. I was devastated and when I left I said I'm I'm so sorry you know it was, probably wasn't a good time for me to come and he's like what are you talking about well he his parents were immigrants from Greece that's how their family communicated <laughs> and my parents you know are both introverts 
from you know New England, <laughs> and we <laughs> barely used talked. You're being totally quiet. <laughs> yeah, we barely talked. So, so this whole you know my my worldview was that people don't yell at each other, um, ever. <laughs> and then his was you know I I heard the term um, aggressively agreeing. <laughs> And it, and that is such so they a, were bonding, but you didn't even realize right it. because I mm. assumed that my interpretation was correct. Mm. And thankfully, I talked to him after, or else you know. So part of what I do as a coach is to help people understand. Okay, what lens are they looking through? And um, and actually, I think I've got a graphic of a of a an apple that with the mirror. It looks, you know, it's it's an apple, but what it sees in the mirror is a core. Of an apple, it's it's hard for people to see wow. what what is true because mm -hmm. of that that um, the interpretations that they layer on. Yeah, I love that. Uh, you know, we used to teach that to students, and when I was a guidance counselor, that you know, do you really see yourself? Mm -hmm. Do you see what you're doing, and who do you see in the mirror? Yeah, yeah, that's a really bold statement. What um, what kind of clients are you working with now? Like what age group and what are they sort of transitioning through? So I, I started off focusing on quiet professionals. Mm -hmm. So people like uh, who I was in the corporate world, uh, a, a quieter executive who sometimes people question, why are you in the room? Because I wasn't talking and whatever. And that's part of the, I, on my uh, manifesto that I will embrace who I am, I will embrace others, I will be heard. Um, mm. Because it's, even though you don't feel like you have anything to say, sometimes you just need to say something anyway, so mm -hmm. people know why you're in the room. Um, and now I forgot your question. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of age group? Oh, okay, so oh. Um, so when I, when I first started out, it would, I would say 40, Plus, you know, most of them women executives. Um, now I've broadened out a lot more. So I use um, my main tool that I use is called Clifton Strengths, and it's about people um, celebrating what's right with them instead of what's wrong with them. A lot of times we focus nice. on what's wrong with us. Nice. We're going to um, take commercial nope. break and we're going to see your commercial, nope. which is really exciting. And then when we come back, we're going to find out more about coaching and Boldly Quiet Consulting. Welcome back. I'm Sherry Damaris, and I'm with Lorraine McCamley. <clears throat> We're talking about her company, Boldly Quiet. And I wanted to have Lorraine on the show because so many of you out there um, practicing macrobiotics and, and learning about veganism want to go and spread it in the world. Mm -hmm. And they want to know how. 
And I think it's really important to take that first step in getting to know yourself, your values. Uh, we talked about looking in the mirror and being more authentic. Mm -hmm. And I love your commercial that we just showed during break. Um, all the different aspects mm -hmm. that you include in the consulting and um, coaching business. Tell me a little bit of, I know you're working globally. You're not just in the United States. So tell us about your, your work globally. So I mentioned um, earlier that I'm a Gallup certified strengths coach that I use Clifton Strengths, And um, you want to explain what that is? So it's based on the strengths philosophy that um, you should do more of what you do well, what you have a natural talent for, mm -hmm. instead of beating yourself up and, and trying to fix yourself. Um, and that program was picked up by um, the Mandela Washington Fellowship. So it's a State Department, U.S. State Department program. And they bring um, cohorts of young African leaders to the U.S. every year. And I happened to be on a list as a strengths coach and got called to work with the University of Delaware. Now, you have to understand, at that point, I think I'd only been out of the country twice and uh, you know, pretty much both on business, and really didn't have a global perspective at all. But I met this wonderful group of, of young African leaders, there were 25 of them, and I taught strengths to them. And I mentioned before how much I would like to, I'm motivated by seeing the ahas. I mean, this was a totally different concept for many of these um, you know, folks from all over Sub-Saharan Africa. And I had just written the book. It hadn't been published yet. And I told the class, hey, you know, when you get back to your countries, feel free to reach out if you have questions. And, and um, so one gentleman did. And I got an email from him. And he said, would you be willing to come to Benin, Africa? And my first response was, where's Benin? <laughs> <laughs> no, I've never been to Africa. And um, anyway, fast forward, you know, pre-pandemic trip to uh, Benin, Africa for two weeks, doing this type of coaching and strengths development. And, um, you know, since then I've worked with, um, you know, spoken to Ethiopia, I've coached people in South Africa. Oh in, my gosh. And uh, just did a program with Uganda. And we just found out we're semi-finalists for a program in Tanzania um, for this summer. So it's, it's been just wonderful. I have, I've had a client in New Zealand, uh, in London. It's, it's, I've, I love how small the world has gotten. But it's put a burden on my heart. And we've, we've talked about this, about making an impact globally. Mm that we're not just U.S. citizens anymore, we're global citizens of what are we doing to impact the globe. That's a wonderful um, statement for macrobiotic people who are studying, mm -hmm. you know, and want to put out this wonderful information into the world. Mm -hmm. How are we impacting the whole globe? Right, right. It's not just our little corner of the world anymore. anymore. Mm -hmm. So with, uh, what are some of the aha moments? I'm just curious, like if someone gets it, is it that they realize what, what their values are or do they realize what they're doing day to day doesn't match up or what are So those? a lot of it is about alignment. So you say, you know, these are your strengths, these are your values, um, and perhaps your job doesn't align with your values or with what you do well. Or sometimes um, if you have your own business, you're not really focusing your resources in a way that meets your ultimate goal. I find that so true. Even when people start practice eating well, they oftentimes think about you know, the typical food pyramid or the macrobiotic plate, and they say, oh, you know, I didn't have my brown rice today or my miso soup where they don't pay attention to what their body needs. Maybe that day they need to eat an orange or skip a meal or mm -hmm. um, and maybe it's hot out and they don't want to have whole grains. So it's more getting in touch 
personally too. It's a personal growth experience. Yes, and actually I'm being trained now for something called core energy coaching, which really um, talks about you're really coaching what's inside of your clients. You're not coaching the external story. So what's happening externally is really just a, a symptom of what's going on inside. So how do you, what are the tools that you use to reach what's going on inside of a person? Um, not letting them get away with not talking about their feelings. So a lot of it's feelings based. Um, now it's not counseling or therapy, um, but there is a lot of, well, how do you feel about that? What if we looked at it a little bit differently? Mm -hmm. Does that resonate with you? Um, what, what do you feel like's getting in your way? So my, my sessions are very structured. We start with, what do you want to accomplish today? How will we know that we accomplished it? Mm -hmm. And then at the end, we check in and say, did we, did we get there? Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of times, we get there in a way that the client wasn't expecting. Mm -hmm. So that's the aha moment. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so, and some of it's about mindset. And, and I, I'm reading a book now by Carol Dork, I think it is, about mindset where, you know, have you heard fixed mindset and growth mindset? The fixed mindset, the, the person's attitude towards their own intelligence is that they've sort of learned everything they need to know. Whereas the growth mindset, you believe that you can always learn more and your, your intelligence can always grow. And I mean, personally, I love, um, and that's one of the reasons I've really enjoyed working with you is you've got a growth mindset. You're willing to, and, and eager to learn and to learn from mistakes and learn from um, opportunities and expose yourself to, you're curious. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And more open, yeah, yeah. and not so stuck. Well, also, I think it's really, really important to forget the dogma. You mm -hmm. know, there's so much dogma in, you know, macrobiotics and, and eating well and eating healthy. People get so afraid and so scared. Mm -hmm. You know, and we often say just add something once a week. Mm -hmm. Try something new or try your great grandmother's recipe and change it up a little bit mm -hmm. and, and clean out the cabinets and add a little bit more healthier ingredients to your cabinets and then use those, you know, play around with them. Mm -hmm. But so it's not so rigid. And it's not so overwhelming. So mm. I, um, a lot of coaches um, like to like meet every week with people or whatever. And I, my philosophy is what do you need as a client? So I had a, um, a client that I met with this past week and he had a couple pretty major eye openers. And he's just like, I need to sit with this for a little bit. And our next appointment is in a month because he needed time to process. To digest it. And that's what I really enjoy about your approach with macrobiotics, that, you know, just a little bit at a time. Yeah, you really, like when I first learned macrobiotics, I was, ch I was trying to change every everybody in my school or wait until I tell all the doctors in our area. Or, and nobody wanted to listen. Nobody was really interested. Um, because you get so enthusiastic, but you're also trying to change yourself. So you think yeah. whatever you're changing yourself, you should sort of control everybody around you so they change. And sooner or later you find out that that doesn't work at all. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, it goes the opposite way. Right, right. You get more enemies and you're called the food Nazi. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's really, really important to, um, you know, the whole time keep an open mind and keep grounded. Mm -hmm. And that's why I love about your work, especially for so many students that are coming through, you know, watching this TV show and coming through my cooking classes. You learn the material, but you also need to learn more about yourself. Mm -hmm. And once you yep. do that, then you can give back. Yes. You know, the one grain, 10,000 grains. We mm -hmm. get so much and then we can give back so much more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you definitely have to um, understand yourself or else 
You know, if I, um, I, I have a lot of friends who are coaches, if I try to pretend to be them, I won't be successful. Yes, I agree. So we need to wrap up. How can people reach you if they want a session? Because obviously it's on Zoom, mm -hmm. um, yep. as you do all, you know, all the, the global clients that you have. Um, how can people visit you and, and learn more about it? And so uh, one great way is boldlyquiet.com. Uh, it's easy to remember. I was so excited when the domain was, <laughs> was available. <laughs> um, or uh, I'm mostly on LinkedIn for social media and just search my name. I'll Great. Well, thank you, Lorraine, for coming. It's always an inspiration. I think like what you talked about, like I said, is so important, especially if you're practicing macrobiotics or veganism and you're looking to give back. Um, so thank you so much and make sure to join us each week. We have a new website. It's www.macromagic.com and check us out. We have plenty of blogs you can read about uh, upcoming TV shows. We post recipes there. We have classes and virtual uh, cooking videos. And uh, this is Sherry Damaris and I hope to see you next time.